It takes creativity to design a decathlon home, strength to build it, ingenuity to power it, and perseverance to get it here. Leaders make that happen. Thank you for building us a brighter future. Go decathletes out there. Let's hear a yell. Let's get this competition on. Huh? Torrential's a good word. The worst weather in Madrid for 50 years apparently, so torrential rain, flooding. We're, we're really trying to push over the next 12 hours uh, to try and get as much done as we can. Exhausted, um, lack of sleep, tired, aching. But I think we've just heard that we're there and the students are now, now open to the public, so that's, that's good news. We're not just competing on the, uh, on the efficiency front, we're also trying to make sustainable living popular. It's actually a house. It's, it's something that could and, and possibly will become something that someone will live in. I think we've ended up with a, a really nice compact starter home, highly efficient envelope, really good in terms of low fuel bills, great levels of comfort, fantastic spaces with great daylight, um, and there's integrated renewables as well. So on the roof we're generating pretty much all of our electrical requirement for the entire year here in the UK. Um, so much so that we, we're now using it to charge our fleet of electric cars that we've gone on test on a, a, another project. It's, it's a combination of all those things that have come to leave us with this legacy from the International Solar Decathlon Competition. Can't talk about this project without talking about how it was built by the students. We, we had the amazing opportunity of becoming our own contractor and finding out all of the problems that that entails. So we had to become experts in you know, where do we store materials, when do we bring them in, uh, what's the sequencing, the health and safety. And we're doing all of this with students who really have never been on a building site. And so that was another problem that we had to think about with the, the design itself. From leaving university I went straight to a university in Chile um, through a connection that I made through the house. And then on coming back, I started working at a firm uh, based on a meeting that I had when I toured the director of the firm around the house in EcoBuild. So I've always been interested in sustainability, but I think the house kind of allowed me to um, pull a lot of threads together and it allowed me to meet a lot of people that have actually really helped my career. I think it's a lovely little house. The envelope is particularly spectacular. It works well. It's also, a, the appearance is great, and that's one of the things that's often missing with buildings that perform well. They've got to perform visually as well. And internally, the building's very tight. It's a small building, it's tight on the site, but it uses the space really, really well. Uh, so none of the spaces feel um, claustrophobic. It's good for modern living, the right relationship between the different rooms, and the light well coming down the center is just uh, tour de force in terms of spreading space and making it feel rich and opulent for a very small building. It's great. We think it is practical. We've tried to make it affordable. It, the, uh, the brief in building it was that it had to be solely powered by uh, solar energy, whether that's the washing machine and, and here you'll also see that it's powering the car as well, giving it energy. Uh, but also we wanted to use existing materials and solutions that we already had in the business. So it's not blue sky thinking or radical R&D, it's using existing products to reach the highest possible standards that a building can. The house should generate all of its own energy requirements here on site for the whole of the year. So this is highly insulated, there's no radiators in here, we don't have central heating. We'll have occasional top-up heating on those really cold winter days. So when you've got a really energy efficient home, the amount of energy you need to provide is, is, is far less and we're doing that by the solar technologies on the roof of the house. The house itself um, has a huge array of different sensors. So for example, this is a temperature and humidity sensor. Um, it's a battery feed device. It's running off a photovoltaic panel that's integrated into it so we don't have to worry about it, it running out of batteries. But all of the information that comes from here on environmental conditions, power consumption, power and energy generation, 
all of that information goes back to our monitoring hub and that gives us a, a database that we can use to analyse the performance of the homes and the systems. Um, it also gives real-time information to our student body when they're learning about the technologies. There's, there's nothing better than actually seeing at first hand how something performs in the building that you're in. So it's a really good way of, of, of teaching and educating people about the different types of technologies we're talking about.